guys welcome back to snt networks so we are back again with a new video uh, on the same series scenario based interview questions part 7 so this video will be based on ipsec wherein you know the interviewer will ask you a simple question right where do you use natty and natd in ipsec also explain about natting process in ipsec tunnel correct so uh, so this will be a very very quick video i am i am just hoping you guys pay attention so they are using where do you see nat t and nat d in ipsec where do you use nat t and nat d in ipsec also explain about so we'll uh, we'll talk about the first half so where do you use nat t and nat d so first you'll tell about nat t and nat d nat t is basically nat traversal which is a basic mechanism for you to uh, you know, basically that helps IPsec endpoint discover the public IP address and ports of each other when they are behind NAT devices. So just for an example, if there is any NAT device in between, so IPsec is anyway overlay. Correct. There, there will be underlay. There lot of. There will be lot of uh, in underlay. There will be lot of uh, routing devices. Right. Correct. So here you can say that NAT T will basically is a mechanism which will help you route traffic over uh, a lot of NATing devices okay so now now we'll say why why do we need to route traffic on a special with a special way on natting devices the reason would be because uh, you're using ipsec tunnel right so here you're using basically uh, you know port 500 udp port 500 correct now you're using port 500 and uh, you know uh, either you're using esp or ah Okay, in most common scenarios we'll use ESP. Okay, so you're using ESP with uh, you know port 500 traversing, but there are a lot of natting devices in between which which will not uh, basically help you take these packets. I mean, which will not uh, uh, you know which will help you traverse the packet. But once that packet reaches the destination from A to B, correct? Once that traffic reaches that destination from A to B, B will basically uh, you know discard the packet by saying that there's a lot of manipulated information correct so i don't think the packet is legitimate from me and it will discard the packet right away okay so what happens in an ip sector so i'll just give you an overview if anybody wants to uh, go ahead and uh, you know basically uh, check the uh, ip sector tunnel again they can basically go ahead and do that as well this is your basic ip sector tunnel i think this was from a previous video Correct. So we have I this this is the whole IPsec tunnels from site A to site B. In this case, what do we say? There are main modes and there are quick mode. Correct. There is one main mode, there is one quick mode. Correct. And we said that in main mode, the first two messages. In the first two messages, we'll have NAT T check if NAT traversal is on. NAT T check. Third and fourth, we'll see, we'll check if there is any NAT device in between. So we'll send a NAT discovery packet, and then fifth and sixth, finally, we will use NATing. We'll use UDP port 4500 for NATing. Correct. So here, what happens is, once the tunnel is established, we have a nonce value as well, which will be used for uh, you know the keying part. Correct. Plus, in order to maintain the integrity, we also check if the packet came from a legitimate source. Correct, just like we do in SSL. Correct, just the MAC value. Correct. So just to maintain the integrity. So what happens is once the packet goes from A to B, the values will change, and once the hash is calculated, it will basically discard the packet right away. Correct. Now, and why will the value change? The value change because the IP addresses over the hops will change. Correct. IP addresses over the hop will change. Uh, now. And uh, now what can we say is, we say that the, uh, you know, the, this is the your uh, data. This is your TCP. This is your IP header, correct? In this you will have um, either your, uh, it will have the source IP and the destination IP, correct? But once you use NATing, what happens, NATT in specific, what happens is the source IP and destination IP may change. We will change, doesn't matter. But you will also have a UDP header of 40 UDP 4500 uh, with 4500 port. So this 4500 port, let me just write it clearly, will be of both source and destination. Okay, 
UDP 4500, both source port and destination port. Okay. So all the encrypted packets in the backend are safe. So consider you have ESP here. Okay. Ideally, it's not usually like this. Let me just draw it properly. So if you have, it depends on the type of mode you're using, tunnel or transport. So let me take a simple uh, this thing, tunnel mode. Correct. So you have data. You have TCP. You have IP. Okay. Original header. You have ESP. Correct. Then you have an external IP header. All this will be encapsulated in UDP. Port, source port, 4500. Destination port, 4500. And the rest of the values will change with respect to the UDP port. But everything else is, since it's encapsulated, no values will change. And once the encrypted IP address, the encrypted IP address of source and destination reaches the, uh, you know, final uh, destination B, they can basically check if it is from a legitimate source. So this is what a NAT-D helps you with. Now what is a NAT-D? NAT-D is basically a NAT discovery packet. And what is NAT discovery? NAT discovery will tell you in the third and fourth, uh, this is again, by the way, main mode. Okay. So in the third and fourth message, NAT-D is here. Third and fourth message, what it will do is it will send a hash value. It will send a packet plus with a hash value Correct of uh, source IP source port destination IP destination port correct and for for this it will create a hash both of them and it'll send it from A to B once this hash is sent well, along with the data similar hash will be calculated at B then we'll see on the same principle if you understand NAT you'll understand why we are checking this on the same principle that the hash value will change correct the hash value will change and it will let you know if there is any NAT device in between. If there are no NAT device in between and if there's a simple hop, correct, the hash value will not change. So it will be just for example, you have source IP here, 1.1.1.1 and destination IP something here, correct. And you take the hash value of this. You create the whole data packet and you create a hash value of this. You send it here, correct. If there is any NATing device between, between it will change this, these values and hence the hash value will change, simple. Correct. So NATD helps you like that. And if there is an, any NATing device in between the value, the hash value will change. And in, once you have noticed the hash value changing, you can make sure that you t enable NATing on A and B. You need to enable NATD or enable some devices will say NATD, but you need to enable NATing on both the devices. Correct. So this is basically NATD and NATD. Also explain about NATing process in IPsec tunnel. So you explained it side by side, stating that the NATing process, in NATing process, the whole packet will be encapsulated by UDP 4500. Now they'll ask you why. Why UDP 4500? Then in that case, you have to tell them why are we using UDP 4500? Uh, it is because, uh, you know, ideally for IPsec tunnel, we use ESP. Correct. Usually we use ESP and we use port 500. Correct. But since UDP 4500 is globally recognized for NATing devices and this is allowed in all the firewalls and layer and devices which support IP signal, uh, you know, naturally will allow UDP 4500 untampered. Correct. That is the reason we allow UDP 4500 and we use UDP 4500. Some things are by default. Correct. You just have to say that it is allowed by default in a lot of network devices. That is the reason we use UDP 4500 and uh, that is the main reason. So I hope this was clear. This was again an interview question which was also asked, uh, you know, to me in an interview recently. So I thought, you know, uh, I, sh I should share it with you all. Right. Thank you. I hope this was helpful again. Thank you.